Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. And I know that we're entering the warmer months coming up, but I wanted to get one more soup in there. Mostly because I went to the supermarket during this whole thing and I saw some gnocchi and I was like, I am gonna make that soup already just for you. You and you. I was saying that to Banjo and Richard. So if you go to this certain chain restaurants, you'll have known that I made this other soup, uh, my version called spinach and sausage soup, something called some Zuppa Toscana they make there. They also seem to make this chicken gnocchi soup. So I said to myself, we're gonna make it in the Instant Pot and make it real, real, real good. Not some like chain restaurant type quality, but talking the highest end home cooking quality. The only thing easier than making this soup is slurping it up. Whether it be on a regular spoon or with a giant serving spoon, it doesn't make any difference. Guys, let's go right to the Instant Pot and make the most amazing creamy chicken gnocchi soup ever. And if you don't know what gnocchi is, you're gonna learn during this video. You'll see. It's very simple, very delicious, very light. Let's go. Alright, so let's begin with our prep work and get that all out of the way. I want to start with a large Spanish or yellow onion and dice it up. Two medium-sized carrots, peeled and diced. And then from a stalk of celery, let's take three ribs, so that it looks just like this, nice and diced. And then you see those leafy tops within your uh, celery stalks here, including the center pieces here? Let's rip those off and let's reserve those for later. All right, so now let's talk chicken. For this recipe, I like to use a whole young fresh chicken. It's about, you know, really, they're gonna say between three to five pounds each one of them, but a lot of that weight accounts for the bones and the skin and all that stuff. You can also totally use boneless, skinless breasts and thighs if you wish instead. However, by pressure cooking with the skin on the chicken, as well as the bones and the cartilage, it's gonna create a richer flavor and color in the soup for this one specifically, which I enjoy. But you can use whatever you want. Also, if you do have a whole chicken like I do here, make sure uh, you cut it up into pieces. The breast is still whole instead of half. That's fine. Uh, if you don't feel like doing this yourself, typically your butcher in your market will do it for you. Just ask nicely. A kind word goes a long way. No, don't be clucking rude to people. All right, now we're going to go to the Instant Pot. We're going to add in four tablespoons or a half a stick of salted butter. All right, now we're going to come down to the Instant Pot and hit saute and adjust so we're on the more or the high setting. And once our butter's melted and bubbling, we're going to add in 8 to 10 ounces of pancetta, that's diced up, or some diced bacon. And this is optional, by the way. You do not have to add the pancetta or bacon at all. You can skip this step if you wish, but I like to add this to the soup. I think it gives it some extra rich, bacony flavor. And if you do use bacon, I would suggest using about the half of a pound or so and just cut it into small little bits before you throw it into the butter to cook it up. And we're going to do this for between six to eight minutes. It really depends on how thick your bacon is or how cubed. And every so often, just throw around the pancetta or bacon in the pot to make sure it gets nice and even cooking. All right, and once we're looking like this in terms of color, we are good. Let's take a slotted spoon and place all of our pancetta or bacon into a paper towel lined bowl. All right, and there we go. Now we're just gonna let this rest in the bowl for the time being. It's gonna crisp up a little bit more as it stays cool. Now let's go back to the pot and add in our onion, celery, and carrot, or our mirepoix if you wanna get all fancy. By the way, leave that grease from the pancetta in the pot. If you didn't use the pancetta, you'll have the butter that you melted. All right, and let's saute our veggies. And you'll see, as soon as you add this, it's going to smoothen the bottom of the pot out. We can deglaze a bit. That's exactly what we want. So when you had all those brown bits in there earlier from the pancetta or bacon, it's going to come up nicely with the veggies. And we're gonna let our veggies saute in the pot for about another three minutes. All right, and after three minutes of our veggie sauteing, we're gonna add in one tablespoon or three cloves of crushed or minced garlic and then let that saute with the veggies for another minute. And after a minute of our garlic sauteing with our veggies, we're now gonna add in a half a cup of sherry wine. You can use cooking sherry, that's fine. And now let's make sure we really scrape and deglaze the bottom of the pot. It should be nice and smooth and clear of anything. You see that when I do that? Nice and smooth and clear, not browned at all. And we're gonna let all of our veggies bubble together now in the sherry for about another minute. If you don't want to add the sherry, you don't have to add the sherry, but it creates such extra rich flavor to this soup. And you know me and my flavors. All right, now I want to add in five and a half cups of chicken or garlic broth, whatever one you want to use. 
And if you didn't use sherry, add six cups of broth to make up for the difference. As well as some seasonings, and that's going to be one tablespoon of seasoned salt, two teaspoons of pepper, uh, two teaspoons of dried thyme, and a teaspoon each of oregano and Italian seasoning. Let's put that in there, and let's stir that up. And now I'm going to add in my chicken. All right, put that in there. Make sure it's nice and submerged into the broth. Wash your hands after touching the chicken. All right, that's perfect. And now we're ready to put our lid on and pressure cook. I'm gonna secure my lid. Make sure the valve is in the sealing position. Now we'll come back to the control panel and we'll hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button and then hit the pressure cook or the manual button. We wanna go for 10 minutes at high pressure and that's it. And now that we're done, we're gonna finish with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so I'm gonna take my lid off. And there's my chicken looking nice and hot and cooked. Now I wanna take some tongs and remove my chicken from the pot and place it in a bowl for the time being. All right, I'm just gonna leave our chicken to cool for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna shred it up. And if your chicken has skin and bones like mine does, well then remove the skin and the bones in the cartilage and just keep the chicken meat. Okay, now I wanna bring my pot back to a boil because guys, we're gonna add some gnocchi. And now we'll hit the cancel or the keep warm slash cancel button again. And then we're gonna hit the saute button again. And we're gonna bring this to a bubble. All right, and once my pot is bubbling, I wanna add in my gnocchi. Now what is gnocchi? Gnocchi is basically like a potato pasta. It's mostly made with potato. But there are other variations and you can really use any kind you like. I just prefer the classic potato for this. You can typically find this in the market in the deli section. Sometimes it's not refrigerated at all. It's just at room temperature and it's in an like, air sealed bag and that's totally fine. Or sometimes it's in the freezer section. Regardless, you can use either one. And into the bubbling soup you go. And then we're gonna let our gnocchi boil in the soup until it begins to float and that's when we know it's ready. And after about three minutes of our gnocchi bubbling, they'll have risen to the top, and that looks perfect. And this is two pounds worth of gnocchi, guys, about that. And now let's turn our pot off. I wanna go to a bowl, and I wanna add in two cups of heavy cream, or half and half, as well as a half a cup of all-purpose flour. And now I wanna just whisk this up until it's nice and combined. You might wanna use a little bit of a deeper bowl than I did, because I'm being very, very careful to not spill the flour outside of the cream. All right, and that is Perfect, nice and combined. And now I'm going to stir in my cream and flour mixture. Don't worry if it looks a little lumpy right now and don't worry about the flour being raw at the moment. It's gonna to be totally great and not have that dry floury flavor once it's added to the soup because it's cooking immediately. And this is what's going to thicken our soup up a bit. And this is why I like to cook my chicken with the skin on it. You have that beautiful coloring mixing in with the creaminess. And just stir for a few moments until any of the lumps just seem to smooth themselves out. And they will. This will take about, probably about a minute or so of stirring. Now it's time to add in some dairy. I want to add in a third of a cup, and you can use up to a half of a cup if you want, of a grated Parmesan cheese. And this next step is optional, but you know my love for this stuff, guys. I'm going to be using some Borsin. This is like a spreadable herb cheese that you can get in the fancy deli section of the supermarket. Uh, Costco sells them at amazing prices in packs of three. Usually find this stuff on charcuterie boards at parties, but guys, this stuff serves a much, much greater purpose when it's mixed into soups and pastas. Trust me, I've discovered that one. And we're gonna stir that up in there until everything gets nice and melted. Make sure all of the borsin becomes totally melted into the soup. All right, perfect. Moving on. I wanna greenify this soup, guys, by adding in about eight ounces or so of a baby spinach. Now, you can add the spinach before pressure cooking if you'd like, you just wouldn't stir it in, but I want this spinach to be a little bit more prominent. So you can absolutely stir it in now, you can do it in batches, and spinach cooks down into nothing instantly. It wilts right away when it's confronted with some heat. <laughs> confronted, as if it's, you know, fighting or something. And you see that as soon as I add the spinach, it begins to wilt beautifully into the soup, and it cooks very, very quickly from the heat. And we're gonna stir the spinach around for about two minutes to let it fully wilt inside of the pot. Looking awesome. And now I'm gonna add in those reserve leafy tops from the celery, remember those? <laughs> My pancetta from early on as well. Look at how beautiful that is set. Also lovely. It's also gonna be very tempting, by the way, to not snatch a few pieces while you're waiting for the soup to cook. And I've taken my chicken and I've shredded it up, discarded any skin, cartilage, and bones. Or if I didn't have any skin, cartilage, and bones when I made my chicken, I just simply shredded it up. As simple as that. And give everything a final stir in the pot. And guys, we are going to have the most amazing, unbelievable, 
creamy chicken gnocchi soup ever. Let's serve some up. All right, and now I'm gonna ladle some of my soup into a bowl. Look at how beautiful this is, guys. Look at this. Mm, glorious, glorious. And some more gnocchi in there. Get it in as good as possible. All right, guys, here it is. I mean, look at the soup. Who's excited? I'm excited. Let's try it out. All right, guys, and here's my chicken gnocchi soup. Look at this. It's like loaded with spinach as well, which I love. If you're not into spinach, if it's not your thing, leave it out. That's fine. Or if you want it super wilted into the soup, you can, like I said, add it before pressure cooking, but I like it like this for this soup. Nice and substantial. All right, let's get some chicken, some gnocchi. Let's try it out. That's it. Just stop. This. Who's fooling with me here? Oh my gosh, I, I, this soup, guys. Oh. Mm. It's creamy, it's cheesy. Mm. That gnocchi, it's like a dumpling. Horace, try a dumpling, it's as light as air. If you get that reference, extra points for you, by the way. This soup is a meal in itself. You can just get a loaf of like crusty Italian or French bread and call it a night. I'm in love with this soup. I'm literally having an affair with this soup right now. It's that unbelievably delicious. I love the greens game going on in here. I mean, the flavor of the soup is creamy with a hint of that bacon flavor, which I love. If you don't want the bacon, simply leave it out. It's, look at the consistency. It's like a chowder. The thickness is like a chowder and that's exactly how I wanted it. It's all about that cream and flour slurry at the very end. It's wonderful what it does. The chicken couldn't be more tender, more melting your mouth delicious. The gnocchi's perfect, the greens are perfect, the bacon's perfect, the soup is perfect. Creamy chicken gnocchi soup right in your instant pot. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, check out PressureLuckCooking.com. That's my website. All my recipes live there. You can check out all of them. And if going to a website for a recipe ain't your cup of tea, good news for you, Bubble Up. I have a cookbook. The step-by-step -step instant pot cookbook, guys. 100 spectacular recipes, each and every one with step-by-step -step photos and a final shot of what each one should look like. Guys, this book promises to be one of the best that's gonna be in your collection. Definitely check it out anywhere books are sold. Go to facebook.com slash pressurelockcooking and like that page for new updates. You definitely don't wanna miss out on that. And of course, subscribe to me on YouTube, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram. Guys, thank you so much again for watching. And uh, when you make a bowl of this chicken gnocchi soup, everyone's just gonna think that you're super dupe. Or something like that. Cheers. It's flippin' amazing, guys, seriously. Make this soup.